Hello third graders. Today we are going to learn about pop art, type of art I know many of you have been super excited to try out. So we're going to watch a short video together, four and a half minutes. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Andy Warhol, the artist who's going to inspire our work today, and then I'm going to show you the project that we're doing. And then after this mini lesson, you'll go and create your own art and upload a picture to Google Classroom. So first, let's watch the video below. And this comes from the Tate Modern, which is a very famous art museum in London, in England. Bananas, my red coat, tomato soup, and comic books. But what do they all have in common? Two little words, pop and art. Pop art is more than an art movement. It's a lifestyle, a craze, a way of looking at the world. But what is pop art? Pop is young, bold, and fun. This is life in the 40s. It's a bit grey. In the 50s, people wanted plastic and glamour. They wanted to have a good time. Buy more, spend more. Don't just watch TV, be on TV. Now, you can listen to the Beatles and Elvis, watch cartoons, eat popcorn, drive cars and become famous. Now, it was pop art, all about culture, after all. Pop art is popular art, art for all. But who were the pop artists? Richard Hamilton, this guy, said pop art was low cost, young, pretty, glamorous, and mass produced. Hamilton made collages using imagery he found in glossy magazines. Lifting images from films and advertising was completely bonkers at the time. This is one of the famous Marilyn portraits by Andy Warhol. Andy, Andy Warhol, this guy, sing a cool guy, but Andy, art was a project. The same as a production line of Coca-Cola bottles, or camel soup. He liked to use bright colours and silk screening techniques to produce art on a huge scale. Pretty clever, I say. Pop art is revolutionary! Pop art is for competitive. Who could do what first? Warhol had his advertising. Lichtenstein had his comic books. Pelosi had his collage. And Minnie Mouse. Wait, let's go back to Lichtenstein. He used Bende dots to make his artwork look like comics. Like the ones you get in newspapers. Female artists were also rocking the pop art trend. This is The Only Blonde in the World by English painter Pauline Boaty. Pauline added fun into her art and was a bit of a rebel. Girl power, Pauline. Pop art came out of the gallery too. Nicola L took this big red coat around the world to get people to get involved with her performance. This made a real pop crowd. Not the celebrity faces in other forms of pop art. Pop art can also be found all over the world. In Iran, Paris Tanavoli was a sculptor and painter. Like other pop artists, he made his art out of things that looked like they could be thrown away. In New York, Jean Michel Bastiat remixed it with hip hop and street art. Pop is on TV, on the radio, and on the internet. Like right now! Does that mean I'm pop art? Well, there's one thing Andy Warhol and I can be on. I don't know where the artificial stops and the real starts. Pretty cool, this pop art. I have a question for you third graders. When in the video they talked about Lichtenstein, 
use dots to make things look like comics. Did that remind you of any other types of art that we've studied? I'll give you three choices. Could be cave art or pointillism or Greek art. If you're thinking pointillism, you're absolutely right. So like you can see, all different kinds of art are inspired by each other. Artists who come later on in our timeline often look back and study the artists of, or the art of those who came before them. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about Andy Warhol since the video just briefly introduced him. So the top left picture, that's Andy. His parents were immigrants to the United States from Slovakia, and he was a very quirky and original man. He was very unique in his art. He was only eight years old, so very close to your age, when his mom taught him how to draw. And actually, like, um, oh, sorry, I stopped my share. Okay, there we go. And like other artists who we've studied, he was actually recovering from a surgery when he learned how to draw. His mom wanted to teach him so that he had something to do. Does that remind you of anyone else that we've heard about? Could be Matisse or Monet or let's see, what's one other option? We'll just do two options. Matisse, yes. So after Andy grew up, he went to college to study art and then moved to New York City. And when he was working in New York, he was an artist, but he was actually making things for commercials and for products. And he got really inspired. In 1961, he had this idea. He thought, oh my goodness, I can use all of these mass produced commercial goods, which just means thing that you, something that you buy in the store, in artwork. And Andy decided to call it pop art. Do you remember what that name came from that they mentioned in the video? Yeah, popular. So it's things that are popular currently is what he used in his art. And Andy normally, as you can see from the screen, didn't just put one image in his artwork. He would use colorful images over and over and over and over again. In one of his most famous paintings of Campbell Soup, I couldn't fit it on the screen because it <laughs> were too many, he actually used 200 Campbell Soup cans and he would use silk screening to reproduce. So Andy's artwork, he was a very good businessman and he ended up making a lot of money off of his artwork. But another thing that was really important to him was that he made a lot of prints so that everyone could access his art. Which type of art do you remember did a lot of making multiple copies of something? Can you think of something that we did and made multiple copies? If you thought of ukiyo-e, you're absolutely right. Just like ukiyo-e, artists made several prints. That was also very common in pop art, both for Andy Warhol and for other artists. All right, artists, so now it's time for us to make our very own pop art. So just like Andy Warhol, the first thing that we're going to do is look for a little bit of inspiration in packaging, in something that we have around our homes or that could be purchased in a store. So now is the time that I'm going to tell you your materials, including that one object. What you'll do is choose a package or an item that you'd like to make multiple prints of. And I'll show you an example, but I've chosen a clip bar because I love clip bar. You'll also need one piece of paper and colored pencils, crayons, or markers. It's up to you what medium you want to use. I chose colored pencils. So you can pause. Go get those items and then come back. All right, so if you're ready, what we are going to do for our project, the first thing that we'll do so that we can make a grid for multiple copies is we are going to fold our piece of paper, either hamburger or hot dog style. It doesn't matter because you're actually going to crease it the other way as well. So I folded it hamburger style first. And then I'm gonna crease it using my fingernails so that when I open it, I can see where that line was really clearly. And now I'm gonna repeat that, but fold it the opposite way. So this time I'm going to fold it hot dog style. And I'm bringing my edges together. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember this art, 
unit, this whole unit is about experimenting, not perfection. You want to make something that you're proud of for trying and for being a risk taker, but it doesn't need to be perfect. So how many squares, well actually they're rectangles, do I have in my piece of paper now? One, two, three, four. That's right. So we are not going to make 200 like Andy Warhol did. We're just going to make four copies of what we'd like. So I chose a clip bar. Andy Warhol used Campbell soups a lot of the time. I'm not a huge fan of soup, so I thought I'd use cliff bars, something that I like. Now for one of your squares, if the package will fit, you could actually use the packaging. So I might eat this and then actually glue it on to one of my squares. But what I want to do for the remaining three squares is make an approximation of this cliff bar, but then make it different colors, just like we saw in Andy Warhol's art. He would often do the same image with different color schemes. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to say that I will, my actual cliff bar, once I eat it, in this square. And then in my second square, you know what, I think I'll do a blue cliff bar. Mine is actually kind of brown because it's a peanut butter one. But I'm just going to trace along this. And if you chose an object, like say you chose a box of Annie's macaroni and cheese, that actual box wouldn't fit here, so you can just draw a simplified version of it. So here is my blue, what will be a blue cliff bar. So I might write cliff, and then I might color this in blue. And again, it's up to you if you want this to be really detailed and in the lines. Typically, Warhol would use very crisp, sharp lines, but if you decide you want to try out a different style, that is perfectly okay. Just like the video talked about from the tape, pop art was all about being bold and creative and expressing yourselves. So you get a lot of creative freedom in this project, artists. You might use bright colors. You might choose to use all one color. You might repeat a blue cliff bar all the way down. And you get to decide how much detail you want to put in as well. So, you know, I traced my first cliff bar. For the second one, I think I can kind of just draw that because I'm realizing it's basically just a rectangle. So my favorite color is purple. Now I'm going to draw a purple cliff bar and I would color this in. And then add backgrounds too. I don't want to leave this negative white space. So let's see what color would go well with blue. It's not orange. I think I'll color in behind this blue square orange. And I would carry on until my whole page is colored in. And then I'd also want a background to go behind My real cliff bar square. So I think I'll do purple for that one. So I'm just coloring with my colored pencil. Again, you might use a different tool. You might do markers. You might do crayons. It's up to you. I'm just scribbling right now. You'll really get to take your time a lot more than I am, but just for the sake of this video being short, I wanted to show you just a rough example. Now I've also prepared an example that I spent a good deal more time on. So I really had fun with this project. So I took my time and I created this piece of pop art. So as you can see, just like I showed with my other example, I have an actual clip bar wrapper here. I had it after lunch, it was delicious. I also colored behind that and then I recreated. You can see these look similar to clip bars, but they're not actually clip bars. This one says olive. This one says home and has a picture of Colorado. And this one says Mac, third grade, Emily and Elise. So I picked four different things that mean a lot to me, things that I love. And I used the pop art style to color them in. So you might create something like this, or you might create a much simpler version. Of course you would go on and finish coloring this in. But what I wanted to show you is that it's really up to you. You could do something that's simple, or you could really put a lot of time into it and effort. 
and come up with something that includes a lot more detail. That is up to you, artists. The main idea of this is using one commercially produced or basically store-bought item and then repeating it multiple times, just like Andy Warhol did. So with that, artists, it is time for you to get to create your own piece of work. Again, the materials you'll need are a piece of paper, something to color with, and some kind of label to inspire uh, your printmaking. So here I use clip bars. And then of course, after you're finished, please upload your work because Emily and I love seeing what you've created. All right, artists, enjoy.